is the process in which wind is used to generate electricity. So, wind it uses wind turbine which converts the wind kinetic energy into the mechanical power. Then it uses the generator which converts that mechanical power into the electricity. Okay, so, can I tell wind how wind is caused? Wind. So, wind is caused by the uneven heating of the atmosphere by the sun or by the rotation of the earth. So, what is wind turbine? Wind turbine is also known as an energy converter as it converts the wind kinetic energy into the electricity. There are three types of wind turbines that is vertical axis wind turbine, horizontal axis wind turbine and there is wind turbine. So some of its advantages are that it do not produce any pollution, it is renewable and is, its cost of construction is very low and it do not produce any pollution so it do not cause any acid rain or greenhouse effect. Its disadvantages are that it is very difficult to store the energy, it can only be stored by using the batteries and the site location is very difficult to find as not every site have a good wind speed. And sometimes birds are also killed because of the looters. So we can conclude that wind energy has many benefits over as it requires less space, it, uh, it is available all over the world and is non-polluting. And uh, tidal energy is also a kind of a renewable energy which has a large potential in the coming years and it has many advantages over the solar and the wind energy. And the geothermal energy is also a renewable energy and the continued shortage have also shown a great and added a great interest in shifting towards the geothermal energy. And at last I would like to say that I would consider that I would like to prefer changeable uh, chargeable devices instead of the cells by which I can save the e-waste in the climate and I can use the recyclable bags for trying the product. Thank you. Any questions? Here are some of 
the advantages given that is environmental benefits, efficiency, versatility, long term sustainability and comparing options. One of the main advantages of hydrogen fuel is their minimal environmental impact. Unlike fossil fuels, hydrogen fuels produce zero greenhouse gas emissions that is the main advantage of hydrogen fuel as it is least impact towards the, the environment. <coughs> Then next is versatility. As hydrogen fuel has very versatile options, it can be used as a fuel for cars. Then cars, then uh, even used in trains also. Then last, uh, we can take comparing options. As compared to other fuels, hydrogen fuel have lower upfront upfront cost and wider availability. So these are some of the advantages of hydrogen fuels. Hydrogen fuels also provide environmental <coughs> benefits. Some of the environmental benefits I have taken here. Zero emission as I have already discussed it. Then reduced greenhouse emission, long term sustainability. Hydrogen fuels are long term sustainable as hydrogen is abundant in nature. We can use it as much as we can. Then energy efficiency, resource sustainability and noise reduction. Unlike conventional vehicles powered by internal combustion engines, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are quicker operation because there is no combustion process involved. This reduction in noise pollution can lead to improvement living conditions particularly in urban areas like as too much pollution is increasing in urban areas, so we can shift towards hydrogen fuel as it can reduce uh, use of carbon by using hydrogen and oxygen. Now let's take a short review of hydrogen fuel works. At its core, hydrogen fuel cell is electrochemical device that convert hydrogen and oxygen into electricity. It uses pure liquefied or solidified hydrogen fuel, hydrogen fuel into a catalytic converter that combines oxygen from air to create water or H2O. Next we will discuss that what, we, what are the limitations that hydrogen fuel usage is facing. Some of the limitations are infrastructure, cost, hydrogen production, storage and distribution, durability and lifespan, public perception and acceptance. As hydrogen fuel plants uh, need lot of infrastructure space and lot of cost to install it. So uh, this is the main limitation that we can see uh, in installing hydrogen fuel. Hydrogen fuels are, are also getting, uh, getting government support also. Some of the supports given by government are infrastructure development. Lot of development in favor of uh, hydrogen fuel is being done. Then financial incentives. Some of the incentives like financial help given by the government. Governments may offer financial in incentives to encourage the adoption of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and infrastructure. These incentives can take a form of tax credits, rebates, grants or subsidies for purchasing fuel cell vehicles, installing hydrogen refueling stations. Now also we know that hydrogen fuel has a very promising future as it is the least effective towards the uh, environment. Before concluding, I would like you all to watch the video. Unlike earlier waves of enthusiasm, hydrogen fuel could be here to stay this time. Technological advances are making hydrogen production more efficient and cheaper. And this, along with government's commitment to decarbonize, is helping drive a new hydrogen economy. We see huge improvements in the vehicles or the processes that use hydrogen, and we see much more sophistication among the companies that are using it. According to a study by McKinsey, there are more than 350 large-scale global projects underway right now. 
The projected total investment in the hydrogen sector amounts to an estimated $500 billion. We're seeing much more interest from venture capitalists, uh, entrepreneurial activity, scientific advances, moving from the laboratories to pilot plants, and ultimately getting towards the marketplace because they know a market that will pay for low carbon approaches or green hydrogen is coming. Germany has announced a 7 billion euro program and the Chinese government wants to have 1 million fuel cell powered vehicles on its roads by 2030. When we think about the tools that are needed to get to a net zero carbon world, there's no doubt that hydrogen will play a role. In the short term, electrification is going to lead to decarbonization charge. But longer term, I think there is a great potential for a real hydrogen revolution that would play a big role in a decarbonized society. For long term sustainability, we have to go towards hydrogen fuels and get it in the society used. So, before I conclude, I would like to say by saying that there is potential of being a game changer in the society and towards the good step of environment, we have to use hydrogen fuel. I will try to be more eco friendly. Or support of green uh, and support of green energy solutions. I will try to use uh, more electric vehicles for transportation. So I will also ask you all: Do you all will take step towards using hydrogen fuel as your source of energy? Yeah. Thank you. I think. <laughs> Thank you so much, Odrashi. Now, the valedictory session will be given by Ritika from MBA. I would like to invite Ritika on the